Hey guys, I just want to go do a quick reminder of completing the square, then I'll show you guys some very ugly math, and we'll finish with the derivation of the quadratic formula. So, let's get started. I just want to remind you that when we're factoring, uh, if we have something like this, that is going to be x plus 1 times x plus 1, also known as x plus 1 squared. All of these are perfect square trinomials, because they're the same binomial times itself. And we're able to do this whenever the the last term is the square of the number and the middle term is two times the number. So if we have this pattern, 2a is in the middle and two, uh, a squared is at the end. Just a reminder, that's what it looks like and we call these perfect squared trinomials because they are a binomial squared. Now, um, trying to find c, here's what this can look like. Uh, if you have x squared plus 6x plus blank and you're trying to find out what is the perfect square there, we can put, uh, we can think of it as, well, we know that 3 plus 3 is 6, so 3 times 3 is going to be 9. And the pattern becomes what is half of the b term and then square it. It's called completing the square. Half of the b term, so b over 2, and then square it. That is the pattern for completing the square, and I will have you guys do some of those um, on the quiz coming up. So, uh, just as a reminder, that's a perfect square trinomial because it's x plus b over 2, that whole thing, squared. Um, in an equation, this is what it looks like. I'll do one of these. Uh, you want to, first of all, you can't just throw on as extra numbers. So we need to make space for it. We're going to do that by adding 0. And the 0 is going to look a little different. We're going to add 9 and subtract 9. And if you remember from completing the square there, the reason we're doing that is because that right there is a, now a perfect square trinomial. We didn't have one before, but we made one. And when we do that, we can change this right here, and we can combine like terms outside. And we now have this polynomial in uh, vertex form, where if we graphed this, instead of equals 0, if it equaled y, the vertex would be negative 3, because it's plus 3, and it'd be negative 5. Attention staff. So, that's the vertex form. Vertex form is very nice because it is simpler to solve than other ones. When you set it equal to zero, you can, uh, you can move the five over, or add five to both sides, and then when you square root it, you have to remember the plus or minus, but you can change this into two equations, uh, x, plus, x plus three equals root five and x plus three equals negative root five, and that gives us two solutions, negative three plus root five, and that's an exact solution and negative 3 minus root 5. And those exact solutions, this is the only way to get these exact solutions um, until I show you guys the formula, is, uh, is how you want to do that. So here, uh, for these next few slides, I just want you guys to sit back and see uh, how completing the square, how ugly it can get, and then solving by taking the square root. Those are the steps, and we'll be able to do a few of these in class, but these next slides, I just want you guys to watch how uh, ugly this gets. So sit back, uh, you no need to jot these down, you can just watch uh, from here on out. The case is when x is not, or when a is not 1, you get something like this. And we complete the square, then we square root both sides, and then we solve for x. Remember those are two different equations. Here's another one. This one's even uglier because 5 is not divisible by 2 very easily, and we have an A. So you get that you have to add 25 over 12. Ugh. Well, when you complete the square, then you move the uh, extra over to one side and square root both sides, you get that. That is quite an ugly mess down there. Here's another one. For this one, go through some other steps. I'll show you by factoring out the A first. It makes a little uglier in the beginning, but it actually simplifies much nicer at the end. And this is what you get. So we completed the square. We're taking the square root now. Don't forget plus and minus. And you get, whoops, getting ahead of myself. You get that as an answer. Looks a little nicer when you factor the a out early on. All right, for this last part, I'm actually going to show you the derivation of the quadratic formula. So if I just had any a, any b, and any c, you could complete the square and it's b over 2a squared is what you need to add to complete it. And on the outside, we're multiplying by, or we're adding that. Um, when you do this, we now simplify this. You complete the square, and I moved the things outside the square to the other side. We then divide by a, 
and we take the square root, it's plus or minus, and I'm actually going to combine like terms, which means I'm going to put it all over 4a squared. And then when you do this, you can actually, when you have a square root, you can square root the top and square root the bottom. And when you combine like terms on the bottom, that's what you get. So this is the quadratic formula that you need to have memorized. Uh, I would strongly have it, well, you should have it memorized. And I want you to notice how much nicer it is than these other things, such as these, which are just hideous to do. So thank you for watching. And I hope you see how nice the quadratic formula is compared to what we could be doing. Thank you.